Okay, so I'm going to show how you can uh, read from a combo box from a web page. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the example. Uh, so it's a very simple example where we take the bits there and we can see here the combo box is managing to post back to the server for it to be able to update the, the values here. Okay, so it's very, very simple. Uh, 0111 is 70 hex, and if we have a look here, there's 70 hex is here. Okay, so the character represented is a small lowercase p, and that's the octal value, that's the decimal value there. And we should be able to see non printing values if we move up there. Okay, if we wanted an A, we would put in 61, 6 in hexadecimal is that, and then a 1 is that, and it gives us an A. Okay, so I'll now show how this is actually created with inside uh, ASP.NET ASP MVC and with a special focus on the JavaScript integration. Okay, so this is my uh, home page here for that. And then I have some partial code, a little bit of Ajax, and then it calls up this part of the page. Uh, so when we press the button, and you'll see there's no button, but I've actually created a button here called Submit, and I've hidden it. So you won't actually be able to see it, but what happens is that that button will be activated, which will cost, cause the HTTP post to happen. Once the HTTP post happens, then the page will update this part here. If we actually have a look at that part, you'll find that all oh, that is is it posts back the results of the the, the conversion. Okay, it doesn't upload. Uh, it doesn't change anything else on the page. And that's the magic of Ajax. Okay, so let's look at the main part of the of the code. So what I'm using here is the Telerix, the Kendo uh, JavaScript uh, integration. And then I create a table, and it's got, uh, as we can see here, a number of columns. And then within each of the columns on the second row. I've created a combo box uh, with an option of 0 or a 1. There's many ways we can create this, but it's, it keeps it nice and simple. Then, with inside our JavaScript, we have, with inside the uh, document ready function, we actually create the instances of the, the Kendo combo box. In this case, we will take 60 uh, pixels and then I've created eight instances of those. Okay, so this will be called at once and we'll actually create the, the combo boxes. Then I've added an event in here. So in this case, whenever there's a change, it will call this JavaScript uh, event function. Okay, so all of them will call the same JavaScript function whenever they change. And then with inside here, uh, what I've done is I take the value from the, each of the combo boxes, convert it to uh, a variable, so that would be 0 or 1. And then, and this is uh, where uh, there's, we then we update a, a hidden text field on the form. Okay, so what we're going to do is take the value that's in the combo box and add it into this element. And then I've hidden a number of these text elements on the form so that when the, the value uh, is, when there's a change in the box, it scans and then we'll update each of these depending on the the value of the the combo box. 
After that, we get the identifier of the hidden button that we've seen on the on the page, and then we do a click, and the click will then do a post back onto the form. Okay, so let's watch this actually happening. So there's our HTTP GET. That's the first thing that's actually called. When we click on the button, or when we cause the event to click on the button, it will call us an HTTP POST. So let's let's run it and see how it works. So remember, we we have an event on the combo boxes, and then those combo boxes go and fill a, a text box which is hidden and then the form will post the values of those text boxes. OK, so let's change one value, so we'll change that one. So this should trigger the event. And we see here we have now a breakpoint. OK, so just to check that our values are coming through, there they are. So it's submitted all these invisible text fields. And then what we do is we can just pop off the values of these text fields one at a time. So we'll just run it to that. We normally would press F10 but F10 will, will quit our the Camtasia recorder here. Okay so there's the values coming through and hopefully we'll get to one where the value is a one. There we go. So that's the value we've just set. So that's set the invisible text field of B6 and we get the value coming through and hopefully the result comes through here and we'll just let it run through and there we go okay so try again if we click here it causes that hopefully now the B7 bit will be set and it is, and the B6 should still be set, and so on. OK, so we'll just let that run through. And so in the background, that's what's really happening each time. So it may not look the most complicated of interfaces, but uh, because of JavaScript and the problems of JavaScript, it really causes a lot of uh, difficulty. Often what we do is we use the alerts uh, on a JavaScript page to do our basic debugging for us.